I'm reading from the book of Acts chapter 37 and to verse 41. It says, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received the, his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. I want to talk this morning on the question, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? 120 people waited in the upper room. They were in one accord, in one place, praising God, worshiping God, and waiting on God. Jesus told them to go and wait for the promise of the Father. This is the promise, he says, for John baptized or truly baptized you with water, but he shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. And he says, now go and wait. According to the book of Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, he says, And he shall receive power after the Holy Ghost have come upon you, and he shall become witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the world. John the Baptist confirmed this saying. He said, There is one that is coming who is greater than I, whose shoes are not able to latch it or untie it. When he come, he will baptize you in the Holy Ghost and with fire. Jesus is the baptizer of the Holy Ghost and he baptizes us with fire, in fire. Have us to walk in fire. And so the Bible tells us as they wait, they knew that something was going to happen. They knew in their hearts it was going to happen. They did not know when it was going to happen, but they knew it was going to happen. And so they keep waiting on the Lord. You know, the Bible tells us that they that wait upon the Lord they shall be renewed in strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagle. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. We need to keep waiting on the Lord and just keep waiting on the Lord because we do not now what is going to happen next if you believe God for something keep believing God keep praising God keep waiting but I tell you God will show up at some point in times and he's going to show up many times uh, in a way that you least expect him to come and I tell you just keep waiting on God don't give up the fight he will show up the Bible tells us for the wrath of God cometh upon the children of disobedience the children of disobedience we need to look at that very, very seriously in Romans chapter 1 and verse 18 tells us, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. That's what we are saved from. You need to get saved. All the argument is finished there. Over 2,000 years ago, something extraordinary, something supernatural happened on the day of Pentecost. The Bible tells us the Holy Ghost came down. The Spirit of God came down from heaven to dwell in the hearts of men. And that's the best news that I would ever hear and you would want to hear. That the Holy Spirit have come down from heaven to dwell in the hearts of men. You see, Jesus said, it is expedient that I go away. And if I go away, I'm going to send another comforter. Jesus is a comforter and he says, I'm going to send another comforter. He is the Holy Ghost. He's going to come down from heaven as I go out and he's going to dwell in the hearts of men. He's going to give you strength, my friend, to conquer sin. He's going to power to walk in the, in the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. He's going to teach you. He's going to guide you. He's going to lead you. He is the spirit of truth. And so no man can fool you anymore. He's going to pull you out of bondage that the enemy cannot have you in slavery. But you can have eternal life and you can prosper in every area of your life if you only understand that and receive the Holy Ghost today in your your life. The Holy Ghost, the Bible tells us, is a gift that comes from God. It's a gift. The Holy Spirit is a 
promise, a pledge that God declared that he will give to us. It is a pledge. It is a promise that God gave to us. Now, we need to receive it. It came down on the day of Pentecost as they were waiting, as they were praising, as they were giving God thanks and waiting for the, for the, endowment, uh, or the endowment of power upon their lives. They need to understand the Holy Ghost came down on that day that confused everyone that was around that place. And so many people begin to marvel and many people begin to say, oh, this is a, a wonderful work of God. And some even doubt it. And some even say, these men are drunk. But Peter, under the power of the Holy Ghost, came out and declared, you see, you have to give people an explanation. You have to have a voice uh, speaking to people who do not know. Men are in darkness and they're walking in ignorance. And therefore, you must have a voice uh, speaking out to the nations of the world that somebody may come out of darkness and be translated into marvelous light. And you just cannot sit down and don't say anything. He says, under the Holy Ghost power, you've got to speak and speak out the truth. So help my God. And so he stood up on that day and he said, I want you to understand. I must give an explanation. These men are not drunk as you suppose because it's only the ninth hour or the third hour day. It's only in the morning. But I want you to understand this is that which is spoken by the prophet Joel saying in the last days God is going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And you, you young, you, 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 you young men shall see visions, you old men shall dream dreams, and even unto your handmaid and God is going to pour out his spirit. Uh, something extraordinary is going to happen. Something supernatural is going to happen upon people who receive the Holy Ghost and it all started on the day of Pentecost. The church needs the Holy Ghost. Every Christian needs the Holy Ghost. The nation needs the Holy Ghost. Everybody needs the Holy Ghost. That's where the power lies. That's where you're going to walk in power and victim become more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 39, the Bible tells us, For the promise is unto you and to your children and all that are far off, even as the Lord our God shall call. The Holy Ghost is the power source that will cause us to overcome and live a holy life unto God. It's the Holy Ghost. You cannot live a holy life by your own self. You cannot make yourself holy by, of course, uh, giving to the poor. You can't make yourself holy by just uh, uh, religiously coming to church. You cannot make yourself holy. God God has to make yourself holy. You must be washed with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. The Holy Spirit is another comforter that Jesus gives to us. He's an aid. He's a helper, a counselor, one that stands in the gap for us. He's making intercession for us. The Holy Ghost is the one that pleads on our behalf. You need the Holy Ghost. Everybody needs the Holy Ghost. Without the Holy Ghost, sin is going to take charge. Without the Holy Ghost, no church can become powerful. Without the Holy Ghost, then you're going to be, you're going to be in bondage by Satan and you're going to do what the flesh tells you to do without the Holy Ghost. He is the spirit of truth and he comes to live in our hearts. Are you hearing me? Now Peter, being filled with the Holy Ghost, spoke about Jesus. You see, if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you're going to talk about Jesus. If you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, you're going to talk about you, you're going to talk about your church, you're going to talk what you have accomplished in life, and you can talk, become very boastful. But as long as the Holy Ghost get a hold of you, you can't talk nothing about but accepting Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that He is King of Kings, that He is Lord of Lords, that He's the mighty one of Israel, that He's the Savior of the world, that He is the truth. The spirit of truth, he can declare what he declares when he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. You would declare all about Jesus. That's what the Holy Ghost came to do, to talk about Jesus and to tell the world that if you accept Jesus in your life, you can be saved. You will get saved. Amen. Are you hearing me now? Now he began to talk about the man Jesus. He said, a man approved of God, conceived by the Holy Ghost in Mary's womb, the Virgin Mary. He said, a man who did mighty signs and wonders, the man who caused the blind to see and the deaf to hear and the lame to walk, the man who cast out devils and spoke to fever just in a word and it went, just spoke the word and things happened. And that's the caliber of man we are talking about. Not just an ordinary man, but a man of power. 
power, a man of authority. His word went with power. His word went with authority. His word went with conviction. Our people got saved. All kinds of miracles took place. Demons screamed out. Demons fell down at his knees, bowed down at him because of the power that comes from the man, Christ Jesus, empowered by the Holy Ghost. He said, this is the man that is approved by God. This is the same man uh, whom wicked people have crucified. It's the same man uh, I want you to understand that God, and I want all Israel and all the Gentile world to know that, uh, know surely that God have made the same Jesus who men have crucified, of men of bad talk, uh, and put aside and say all kinds of evil things about him. The same man uh, that God uh, took and make him in to become Lord and Christ of the entire universe. Come on, somebody say amen. A powerful man of God he's talking about. Are you hearing me now? The same man we're talking about couldn't stay in the grave. The undertow the Bible tells us he was rose from the dead. You see, death couldn't hold him back. Amen. Nothing could hold him back. But death uh, had to go when the when the living comes along. As long as the living comes along, death must go. And the third day he triumphantly rose from the dead Amen. to give life to everyone who is in a dead state to become alive only in Christ Jesus. He said, I am the resurrection and life. Though you were dead, yet shall he live. I don't care how bad your sin may be, but God is able to do it. Peter declared in Acts chapter 2 and verse 21, he says, that whosoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He says, whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. People all over the world, in every nation, every tongue, calling on the name of Jesus and receiving salvation. You see, I understand what the scripture says, for God has given us a name, a name which is above every other name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, of things in heaven, of things on the earth, of things under the earth, and every tongue shall I'll confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. If you believe that, say amen. We have a name. We have a name today. There is no other name given among men whereby man uh, shall be saved. Only the name of Jesus. I tell you, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is life in the name of Jesus. There is authority in the name of Jesus. He says, in my name, you shall cast out devils to those who believe. He said, in my name, uh, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's the power and authority that God has given to us uh, in his name, the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. And you and I do have access to God uh, uh, and through Jesus Christ to the Father. We can come boldly today to, the, to Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior and, and talk to God about our situation and plead for mercy and pardon. You're going to have it. You're going to find help in the time of your need. Amen. Would you call on the name of Jesus today? Would you call the name of Jesus to receive salvation? In Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18, the Bible tells us, he says, Come now, let's re let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. He said, come to me. Come to me. Come to me. That's what Isaiah is saying, what God is saying. He said, come to me and let us talk about your sins. Come to me. Let us talk about your situation. Come to me. Don't go to anybody. Don't go to the psychic. Don't go to the damsel who was possessed with a, with a divination spirit, family spirit. Don't go to them. Don't go to the obvious man. And don't go to the philosophers. Don't go to the theologians. Uh, go to a man and go to a woman. Uh, actually filled with the Holy Ghost. Because the counsel they give you is of the Holy Ghost. And you must recognize who have the Holy Ghost and who do not have the Holy Ghost. He says, come to me now. He's calling. He says, come to Jesus now. He says, come to Jesus and let us talk about your sins and let us talk about your matter. It doesn't matter if your sins are like scarlet. That is, when the Bible talks about scarlet, they're talking about a double dye that they put in a piece of cloth that actually you could do what you want. You can use all the all the detergent and all the, the thing that they can put a, a, to actually take out stain. It still will not take off that stain. And God is saying that to us, our sin is like that. Our sin is in a, in a permanent state, uh, uh, a state whereby it's stain. We are stained 
pain with sin, but he said, it doesn't matter. I want you to come. I'm well able to take care of that now. Come on, somebody say amen. It doesn't matter what your sin may be. My, he says, my son, my son Jesus' blood is well able to take that permanent state I've seen and clean you up and make you like a brand new person. If any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new man. All things are passed away. And behold, new things have been added unto you. Hey, you come to Jesus and God is going to make you brand new. Come on, somebody say amen. He says, if they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You've been hearing that song for centuries now. He says, it still remains the same. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. There is nothing. You can make up new songs and talk about new songs, but it still remains the same. What can wash away all of our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. It doesn't matter how stain you are, how permanent it may be, but I tell you something, if you come to Jesus, the blood of Jesus will wash you from every sin. Hallelujah! He said, now after Peter finished preaching on the day of Pentecost, many, many came to Peter and the rest of the apostles asked, men and brethren, what must we do? What shall we do? That's the question that people need to be asking. If you have not asked that question yet, at the end of the sermon, you ask the question and you're going to find the answer in a little while now. But what shall I do? What must I do to get saved is the question to the nations of the world. Are you hearing me now? Amen. He says in Peter reply in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. He said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins and he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. He said, repent, turn from your sins. Change your mind from the way that you're living. Change some sin. Receive Jesus in your heart and your sins will be pardoned, forgiven. You shall be saved. And the Bible tells us 3,000 people gave their lives to Jesus on the very first sermon that was preached on, on Pentecost under the power of the Holy Ghost. In Acts chapter 16, in verse 30 to 31, the keeper of the prison, like I said before, asks the same question. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And, and, and Paul and Silas answer, he said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. And they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He was saved and his entire household was saved. Come on, are you hear what I'm saying now? If you believe in Jesus now, my friend, your sins are going to be pardoned, washed away by the blood of Jesus and not only that your house will be saved your sons and daughters will get saved I say your grandchildren will get saved it doesn't matter how rebellious they may be now but at some point in time the Holy Ghost is going to get hold of their jaw and bring them down like a prodigal son to a place whereby they can only look up and say I'm arise and go to my father and say father I have sinned against heaven I have sinned against you make me a hired servant at some point in time that Jesus promised, don't worry, just keep waiting on the Lord. Just keep waiting on the Lord. And those who have unsaved uh, and sons and daughters and unsaved family, you just keep waiting on the Lord. Keep praising the God. God, please keep thank giving God thanks. I don't know when it's going to happen, but all I know in my spirit that then you wait upon the Lord and suddenly God will show up. I don't know how many years it's going to take, but I'd suddenly God is going to show up. I may be 20 years from now, but I'm suddenly God God is going to show up and bring salvation and deliverance and healing to your family. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Have faith in God, he says. Put your trust in Jesus. Receive him into your heart and you shall be saved. Now, in Acts chapter 2 and verse 40, we kind of, it's the same thing going down, but something that Peter had that I must have also. In Acts chapter 2 verse 40, the Bible tells us, and with many other words, did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. The generation that we are living in, in this time is crooked, is perverse, my friend. Think about the time that, that it was spoken by the prophet then. They said almost 2,000 years, over 2,000 years ago, it says, save yourself. You're not called to save the world. 
You're called to save yourself. You make sure that you got saved. If you're trying to win the world, you can't do it. Jesus didn't win the world. He conquered sin. And then he followed him. Not everybody got saved. Not everybody got healed. Not everybody would be saved. Not everybody would get healed. But we are allowed to understand this from the words that were spoken almost 2,000 years ago. He says, save yourself from this perverse and crooked and wicked and evil generation that we are living in. You ought, to, you ought to make sure and see about yourself and your salvation. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. The generation was, was really, really bad, evil and corrupt. What about now? It's more wicked than ever. More wicked than ever. It's called Noah's time, like, a, like the Bible talks about Noah's time, a time when people were eating and drinking and marrying and doing all kinds of things they imagined to do. God was not with them. God was not honored. God was not glorified. God was not pleased at all in the life. God was not praised. When the presence of God is not in our lives, is not in the church, is not in the nation, then sin is going to take charge, my friend. Noah, the preacher a righteous speech for 120 years and say repent turn from your wicked ways turn the flood is going to come God is going to judge uh, judge the world save yourself from the judgment they must have laughed at him like many people are laughing today when I'm preaching this gospel but I don't care I know somebody who laughed will get saved anyhow hallelujah he said we are living in Noah's time men are getting more wicked and more wicked every single day nations are more Moving away from God and following the lies of the devil and sending people to hell. People are having, have become lovers of themselves, lovers of pleasure rather than the lovers of God. Amen. And I just want to draw one issue here now. Today they have redefined, or many are redefining marriage. Are you hearing me now? There are new laws in many nations of the world. They have redefined marriage as a contract between two persons of different sex, sex or the same sex. The word father and mother is beginning to change in France in the, in the uh, legislation. They are now replaced by parents, allowing them to start adopting children. Note this. And judge for yourself that if you are not living in the last days that we see around, certainly I believe in my heart that we are living in the last days. It's called Noah's time. Amen. Next year, I understand. No, next year, 2013, France will become the 12th country to legalize gay marriage. They will join Europe and Denmark and Norway and Sweden and Spain and Portugal and Netherlands and Ireland and Belgium and Britain and soon the United States. Spain and Spain alone, there are over 21,000 at this time. Over 21,000 same-sex couple got married. I'll tell you something. You have to understand the view of the President of the United States he says he think that same-sex marriage uh, uh, um, should be instituted. He think that it should be so. He said that he had changed from the past view of thinking because of the influence of people, because of the influence of friends, because of the influence of family. He changed it. He's going to change his views or, or thinking about changing his views because he's not walking according to God's standard. He's walking according to his own standard and the standards of the world, the standards of the philosophers, the standard of the sinners. Amen. Are you hearing me now? He says here now, he says, uh, in, you know what France president say? Franco Hollande says, it is a progress for all society. Minister of Family Affairs in France says, it is a legal protection. When people and nation moves away from God, secular humanism takes over. God's standard of holiness is gone. Sin takes over. The Bible declares righteousness exalts the nation. But sin is a reproach to any nation. It's always going to lead to death. You check for yourself and see what is happening around the world. And tell me, you're concluding your mind, those who are born again. And tell me, if we are, if we are not in the last days, we are in the last days. But I'll tell you, there is still hope now. While 
while the Holy Ghost is here, while Jesus is still saving people, we still have hope, he says, in Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. He says, if my people, that's the church, who are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and pray and pray and pray and seek my face, he says, and then I want to hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal the land. There is still a hope, my friend. There is still hope for the nations of the world. And it is getting worse and worse, evil and more wicked every time. It's going to happen until Jesus comes. It's going to happen when Jesus comes back. He says, will I find or will he find faith on the earth? God is exalting us. He says, save yourself from this crooked, perverse, wicked and evil generation of our time. And it's going to get better if you hear this message a hundred years from now. It's going to be worse than when I preach it now. What he says, don't be contaminated or get contaminated with the world. Do not get contaminated with the evils of the world, he says, for all that is in the world is the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. He said, these are not of the Father, but they are of the world. You cannot love the world and love God at the same time. He says, if you're a friend of the world, then you cannot be a friend of God. I want to be a friend of God. If you want to be a friend of God, then change your life today. Save yourself from this crooked and perverse generation. As the church, we are living in a world, but not of this world. Don't get contaminated with this world, my friend. Live a holy life. Don't separate yourself from this world, but let the light shine in the world of darkness that people may see and glorify the Father which is in heaven. What must I do to get saved, you may ask? Just receive Jesus in your heart, and he will deliver you, and he will preserve you until he's coming back to take the church out of this world. I want to thank you for listening to this program. And I know God has done something in your life today. You ask in the say, if you have not asked that question, what must I do to be saved? I want you to ask the question now. Because if you don't ask it, I assure you if you die, you're not going to be with God. You will not be saved, delivered or preserved until Jesus comes. This is the time. Now is the time that you receive Jesus in your life. It is a call also and a warning for the church. That they must save themselves from this crooked and perverse generation. It is going to get worse and worse every single day. It's my heart desire and God's desire and every preacher desire who's of the Holy Ghost that you get saved. Be born of the Spirit. If you're in your living room or wherever you are, you've listened to this program. I want you to say this prayer after me. Father, I've heard your word today. I know Jesus is the way to salvation. The Holy Ghost is helping me now. I receive you now. I repent for my sin. I receive you, Jesus, into my life. I confess my sins and may the blood of Jesus wash me now. Thank God, confirm my spirit now that I am saved, sanctified, washed in the precious blood of Jesus, guaranteed by faith in Jesus that I will go when he comes. Thank you, Lord, today in Jesus' name. I want, I want again thank you for listening. Now we have some stuff that you can get into now. You can go into our, our website, Table and Open Bible Church. You can look at, at YouTube. You can look at Facebook. All this stuff we have prepared as a church in Table and is for your benefit. It's not for our benefit. It's for your benefit. We provided that for you. I trust that you will go into the website. There's some stuff that you can read. You can see some videos and all of that stuff. And it can bless your heart. I'll see you next time in Jesus' name.